Hey everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Aradhna and today I'm here with the part third of the great inner novel by Dr. Shashi Tharoor. And today I'm going to focus on the part first and part second of this book. And we're going to discuss the detailed summary of both of these parts. So without any further ado, let's get into today's video. And uh, this is the continuation of the great Indian novel uh, study guide series. So I hope you all will check out the previous two videos we have made on this channel um, about this book. So without any further ado, let's get into today's video. I told you in the last video that this book is divided into 18 parts as the Mahabharat book is divided into um, 18 parts. So, the, so before discussing the first part of the video, before getting on to the book, I uh, wanted to share this uh, little map with all of you which will be placed somewhere here because I have made it like more elaborately so that both the uh, characters that are represented in the Mahabharat as well as their counterparts in the Indian history, I have placed their photos in the map so that it would be more helpful for all of you. So please refer to it, take a screenshot of it so that you can uh, uh, understand it more easily. And it is given in the first page of this book uh, so that uh, the reader could understand more elaborately what uh, the Mahabharat is all about. And uh, so there will be no confusion about that because this story is a parallel between the Indian history and the Mahabharat. So you need to know the uh, great Indian family as this book describes it. So it starts with Shantanu and Satyavati as you can see from here. So, uh, so the thing is that Shantanu has a child called Gangadat with uh, Ganga that is Ganga Putra. Okay, we all know that Bhish Pitama and he is represented by Gandhiji as I told you in the first video. So, this is one of the most important character of the book and uh, uh, the thing is that it, it has nothing to do with Gandhiji's parents or anything. It's just, it's not parallel. The parallel is not like... Uh, everything every every bit of a story fits into the both you know the Indian story and the Mahabharata story uh, very very exactly but the thing is that the parallel has been drawn between characters not the whole story so try to uh, you know suspend your disbelief so that you can just enjoy the story so uh, Shantanu has a child with Ganga which is whose name is Ganga Dattu, which is Bhish Pitama or Gandhiji okay now Shantanu is then married officially to Satyavati and with Satyavati now uh, already had a son called Vedvyas by this um, saint called as Prashad. Now the Satyavati and Shantanu, both of them are married. Okay, when they both are married, they have two sons, that is Chitrangad and Vichitravarya. Now, now Chitrangad died in a, at a very early age. Now when Chitrangad dies, there is only one son, right, Vichitravarya. Now the Gangadatta is the regent king of this um, Hastinapur, the kingdom of Hastinapur. Now the thing is that he has a captured league like these three princesses called Amba, Ambalika and Am Ambika. Okay. Now the thing was that all of these three princes were to be married to Vichitravarya according to like they can have a lot of wives. So the thing was that but what happened is that Amba was already in love with uh, I think I think Raja Shalya or something. So what happened is that Vichitvarya just uh, discarded her because he was like you know you love somebody else then how can I be in your you know in like it's not it's not pure that your heart is like kind of not pure and that's why I cannot uh, now marry you and then when she goes to uh, Raja Shale whom she loved uh, he also said the same thing that you know you have uh, been uh, you know captured by them and everything so uh, uh, now I cannot be with you okay so she was like you know what the hell is happening and 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 she goes to um, Ganga Dutt that you know now because of you I don't have my father's home I don't have your home and I don't have Raja Shal's home so I am you know what should I do you should marry me but what what, what the the twist is that Ganga Datta has taken the oath of celibacy for all his life and this is where uh, the uh, the you know characters of Ganga Datta and Gandhiji both have been you know uh, shown in the same light because of uh, the fact that if you do a re little research that Gandhiji also took the oath of being celibate though it is a whole new point so um, I am not going on that so 
he starts doing uh, he he said he says that you know i am a celebrator and i uh, have taken a vow to be like that uh, for the whole of my life so i cannot marry you neither i can help you so, now it is said that after hearing the answer of gangadatta she took a oath amba took a oath that she will kill him in her in her next birth now in her next birth she is born as the uh, brother of a uh, Draupadi okay in the Mahabharat as you must have seen in the TV serials and all those things so it happens but here this Amba is going to be reborn as a Shikhandi as we know from Mahabharat now this Shikhandi character is a parallel to Nathuram Godse who is gonna kill Mahatma Gandhi and that is how we are going to see the killing of Mahatma Gandhi along with the killing of uh, Bhish Pitama by Shikhandi and by Nathuram Godse Gandhi ji will be killed so this is the future plot of the uh, of the of this, of this novel so now we have to shift our attention to Satyavati who has a child with Prashar that is Ved Vyas now, now what happens is that uh, Vichitvarya also dies without having any child with Amba or Ambika so this uh, whole kingdom is like childless and uh, this Ganga Datta has taken the oath not to become a king also and to be celebrated as well so there is no uh, king uh, so now there is no a uh, successor or heir to the throne of Hastinapur. Now, what should be done? So the thing was that it is said that uh, you know in ancient times, if this kind of a situation arises, a uh, holy saint, uh, you know, a kind of Mahatma that Vedvyas is, that kind of a person can inseminate the wives of the person uh, with whom they want the child, and they can have a child. So it would be legal or anything. I have really no idea about all those things. Though you can do a little research. There's a Wikipedia about that uh, process, whole process. So what happens is that uh, it, 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 this is, uh, you know, proposed by the people that, you know, it, it has to be done in order to get a heir to this uh, kingdom of Hastinapur. So. So now what happens is that here you see Vedvyas. Now Vedvyas is uh, inseminates uh, Ambika, Ambalika and a maid servant as well. Now the story behind this is that you know Ambika was the wise, wa first wife of Vichitravarya. Now Ambika was uh, when she uh, you know went to um, uh, Vedvyas to get inseminated the thing was that she closed her eyes you know by the fear that how is you know the thing is gonna get so uh, th that's why the child which was born was blind because she has you know uh, 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 covered her eyes and the second wife Ambika who was also who she was terrified as well and she became pale and at the sight of Vedvyas and uh, the child born to her was Pandu which is the name like Pila Pandu so this name was taken and the th third time what happened was that it was said that Ambika uh, should be sent again because you know a blind child is like no child okay so uh, she was sent again but the thing was that she was so terrified that she as uh, she sent a maid servant to him rather than going by herself so what happened is that that maid servant so gracefully uh, you know uh, took that you know is such a such a big priest is there to uh, inseminate me so she took it gracefully and the child she bore was uh, vidur who is called to be the dharmputra vidur that is why he is uh, called to be the most wisest person in the in the whole of mahabharat so the uh, thing is that these three children are born Dhritarasht, Pandu and Vidur. Now the thing is that as I have put these pictures as well, Dhritarasht is represented by uh, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru because so the blindness, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru was not blind and the thing about his blindness is that he Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru was too much into his idealism and it is said that he was not kind of a practical person uh, who, who was uh, fit to uh, you know rule the country like a democracy like India so the thing was that uh, that is why these two uh, you know characters has been assembled because Dhritarasht was a blind person because because of his blindness he was not a proper you know king who could who could uh, pro prosper the country so that's why uh, Jawaharlal Nehru was also kind of 
portrayed that he was not a fit person to um, rule India as such as a prime minister. So it has been said that he is kind of a blind idealistic. So those were the things. Now, second of all, there is also the character of Gandhari which is uh, represented by Kamala Nehru, the wife of Jawaharlal Nehru. Now about Kamala Nehru, I am not going to say anything else right now. It is going to come in the later chapter. So I'm going to talk about that then. Now here we are going to talk about uh, Pandu, the second child, which is uh, by Ambika and Vedvyas. Now the second child, Pandu, who was pale, had two wives, Kunti and Madhuri. Now this Pandu is represented by uh, Subhash Chandra Bose. Now, uh, now the things that uh, make Pandu and uh, Subhash Chandra Bose very similar is that they both had a lot of, um, you know, a lot of potential, but they did not had the sources and the circumstances as well. And that's why they failed, you know, kind of. So now here uh, he has two wives, Kunti and Madhuri. And now the third son, Vidur. Vidur is the most wise person. And I think you all can guess it is Sada Vallabhai Patel. And about him as well, because he was the son of a maid servant, he was not, uh, you know, the, uh, the rightful uh, heir to the throne. He was a son of a maid servant. So he was, no matter how wise he was, his opinion was like, you know, wh wh why, why should we even listen to him? So actually, it is also said that he was better than uh, Dhritaraj or Pandu to, to you know, be uh, there. Uh, if you see in the uh, Indian history scenario, right? Uh, he was better than uh, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, Subhash Chambos or Gandhi Ji of a or anybody else, you know. Sardar Vallabhbhai Patel was a wi very wi wise person, uh, well-educated, good person that is why the character of Vidur has been portrayed by Sardar Vallabhbhai Patel and all the similarities I think are so so perfectly fitted into these all these characters so now the characters that you need to keep in mind are the characters of Dhritarashtra, Pandu and Vidur as well as their children now the characters that you have to keep in mind is of Dhritarashtra, Pandu and Vidur okay from here the story uh, the characters before that are just reference to Mahabharat and they have no role pl to play in this novel now Gandhari and Dhritarashtra have this girl named Priya Deryodhani and now I guess I don't need to tell that it is the combination of the words um, Priyadarshini which was the name of uh, Indira Gandhi a first women prime minister and also the combination of Duryodhan so it's like Priya from Priyadarshini and Duryodhan say Duryodhani and it's Priya Duryodhani this name has been this fictional name has been given to this because the name of uh, you know Indira Gandhi uh, written in this um, the contro it, it should have been controversial that's why i guess these names have not been totally given to this okay so now the second thing that we need to keep in mind is that pandu had two wives okay pandu that is subhash chandra bose with yes. kunti and madhuri now from kunti he has um, three children that is yudhishthir and bhim and arjun and from madhuri has nakul and sadev now uh, the characters of all of these i have to uh, uh, talked about it in the first video so go look at it uh, now this vidur does not have you know any importance so about his child or about his heir there is no really reference to that so that was the great indian family that you need to know in order to just start reading this story i know this is a very very difficult book to read because there are a lot of references to mahabharat i mean first of all you have to be a fan of mahabharat to read this book that is what i believe in and i I think every Indian could read it because, you know, Mahabharat, we all have seen that serial and everything uh, from our childhood. So, yeah, now let's get on to the part one of this book. In the first chapter, what happens is that there is only the introduction of this great Indian family, as I already told you. All the important points okay so now he tells about how you know Satyavati met Prashar and uh, he convinced her or seduced her to have this child Vedyas with him and all those things that she would remain you know pure even after the birth of this child and all those 
illusional or mythical things okay so this thing happens in the first chapter and and the second thing which has been shown in this chapter as well is that how shantanu had a son with ganga as well whose name was devdatta now devdatta's character has has a lot of importance because you know it is first of all the character of gandhi ji and it is so important and the character of bhishma pitama was also important in the mahabharat and the character of gandhi ji is very important from the point of view of the indian history so both these characters these two similar characters are the most important characters of this novel and what happens is that they both shantanu and satyavati have a son with uh, you know separate people uh, uh, and they are married now shantanu and satyavati because so ganga datta was the son of ganga and shantanu it was also uh, you know said that by um, satyavati that you know maybe uh, ganga datta will take uh, take over uh, hastinapur so that's why he took the oath that he will never become the king he will be the region king and he will you know look after this state but will never sit on the throne and never be a you know direct king so uh, for for her uh, you know uh, for her uh, sons or grandsons you know the throne will always be empty for them another thing that happens in this book is that after the uh, marriage of shantanu and satyavati uh, the birth of uh, chitranga then vichitravarya is also there and chitranga died at a very early age vichitravarya also died without having a child a son or a daughter or anything so to say and after his death we get to know about the uh, birth of dhritarash pandu and vidar by ambika ambalika from uh, vedvyas from the insemination of vedvyas and after that we also get to know about the birth of dhritarash to pandu and vidar by the insemination of vedvyas into uh, ambika and ambalika and the maid servant so this is also there the last but not the least the uh, oath of amma is also there which is kind of a, a very you know it's gonna it's gonna come back in the later chapters when gandhi ji is gonna die so uh, yeah which is told in the first part of this book is how ganpati is you know assigned to um, uh, to go and uh, you know transcribe the mahabharata by vedvyas uh, Uh, so it is also very a uh, beautiful picturesque uh, kind of description is there it's also very important part of this book so those are the kind of things and uh, for all these character references you can go back to the last videos i uploaded about this uh, topic so now those are all the things that has been uh, represented and the main characters of the novel has been introduced and their counterparts has also been introduced okay i hope all of this is clear now we should get on to the part second of this book which is called the duel with the crown so it is an illusion to other books as well you can refer to wikipedia about it there is a lot of description about this book and you could just check all those facts there i'm going to talk about the main you know plot of the book uh, the plot of the part second of the uh, of the novel so let's uh, talk about that you can check the facts on wikipedia as well Now the most part of the part second of this book revolves around the upbringing of Dhritarash, Pandu, and Vidur because they are going to be the most important parts of this uh, uh, of this novel. Because from the point of view of Mahabharata, uh, Dhritarash, Pandu, and Vidur are one of the most important characters, and from the point of view of Indian history, the characters of uh, पंडित जवाहरलाल नेहरू सुभाष चंद्र बोस एंड सरदार वल्लभ भाई पटेल आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट अलोंग विद द महात्मा गांधी फैक्टर व्हिच इज everywhere present in the book you know there is not a i guess there is not a single page from you know before the death of gandhi that he has not been mentioned so he is like this central figure in the novel so now here i'm going to talk about uh, a little about this the the description that has been given about the uh, you know the characteristics that uh, are there in the characters of dhritarash and pandu and vidur and how those has been differentiated in the book and what kind of language is used for them because this is like a really good description of the characters or from the point of view of indian history as well and from the point of view of mahabharat as well so here is that about dhritarash what he says that dhritarash was a fine looking young fellow slim of aquiline nose and aristocratic bearing now the thing is that this aristocratic bearing is because he belonged to a rich family and because he was uh, you know educated in england and he was this sophisticated person and he had this 
aquiline nose right uh, this kind of slim and you know uh, fine looking fellow all these characteristics so much you know uh, resembles to the uh, to the to the you know portrait of uh pandit jawaharlal nehru and it's, it's such a fine thing his blindness now further he says that his blindness was of course a severe handicap but he learned early to act as if it did not matter so the thing is that his blind idealism or his blindness of his raj the blind idealism of jawaharlal nehru he you know overlooked it he ignored it he does not you know because there was so much Uh, of it in him that he is you know he has learned to ignore it he does not really care about that okay as a child he found education in india a hallowing experience which was no doubt why he was uh, to do course and to eton now eton is england right so no further it has also been said that you know how his character de- developed into this you know um, fabian socialist and he also says that i have often wondered what might have happened had he been able to see the world around him as the rest of us can you know because he was in england and he did not see the real india as as it as it was uh, to rule on it okay might india's history have been different today so I mean, if he would have lived in India, he would have seen the kind of, you know, the real India that we call. So uh, it's like he is accusing him of not seeing the real India, and that's why he was not able to, you know, rule India as uh, as efficiently as he could have. So. Yeah, that was about Adhit Raj, and the second is about Pandu. Now, Pandu is Ah uh, Pandu the pale, whose mother had turned white upon seeing me. Pandu never lacked in his strength and courage. Okay, like it's about Subhash Chandra Bose. Okay, now further, what he says about Pandu is that what Pandu never had much of was judgment, or as some of his admirers prefer to see it. as luck now as most people say that you know subhashan was uh, you know had everything that he could have done to uh, you know uh, get india freed and you know what people always call that he did not have luck actually what he lacked was judgment that's what the writer here is saying that so he said he could have enjoyed the english education the thrust revered reveled in but he did not even complete the indian version of it the thing is that he did not even in you know give importance to indian education as well though edhrash was at least you know well educated in england and all those things but now further what he talks about is the uh, education of uh, subhash chandra bose that uh, you know he he too could have enjoyed the english education that rash revelled in but he did not even complete the indian version of it i mean he he did not uh, you know give too much attention to uh, you know this uh, education okay after insisting with more pride than judgment on pursuing his studies in india rather than in england he was expelled from one of the country's best colleges for striking a teacher an englishman who has called indians dogs okay so he is talking about this incident in the life of subhash chandra bose uh, and that's why he was expelled from the college and so th- these are the kind of things that has been you know drawn parallel to it and that's how all both of these characters are simultaneously you know uh, developing also and both of uh, the characters sticks are you know in parallel But here is this one of my favorite instances of the book that he says that yes we indians do have a number of dog like characteristics such as wagging our tails at white men carrying sticks and our bark is usually worse than our bite okay so these are the kind of you know anecdotes that uh, this book provides uh, and the, the, it is the usp of this book i mean there are a lot of you know uh, such anecdotes in this book which make this book uh, you know a very important a uh, very important uh, a piece of literature from the point of view of humor as well i think i that's why it, this book never gets boring because of these little anecdotes and so now this was everything about pandu and subhash chandra bose now we should get on to the third son that is vidur vallabh bhai patel so now it's it is said that in intellectual gifts and administrative abilities he outshone his two brothers that is sada vallabh bhai patel we know that he is you know talking about sadar vallabh bhai patel from the point of view of 
Vidur. Okay. So, but knowing from the very beginning that unlike them, he had no claim on a kingly throne. He developed a sense of modesty and self-effacement that would enhance his effectiveness in his chosen profession. Okay. For Vidur became the most valuable and underrated of creatures, the bureaucrat. Okay. He became a bureaucrat as Sadawa Vallabhai Patel was a bureaucrat. Okay. So these were the kind of things that has been mentioned in this book uh, about the upbringing of these three national leaders and uh, how they are going to affect our country it is uh, shown in the uh, later chapters okay. there are two more characters which has been introduced in the second part of uh, this book that is he slope and sir richard now sir richard is a kind of uh, british resident at hastinapur it's kind of a, like a viceroy of india and at that point in time whatever they called it so uh, this is uh, the thing and there is also this meeting of sir richard to uh, gandhi ji and there is some conversation which is not that important right now so you all must have uh, read this in your history books if you liked history i loved history i really do and it's uh, the Champaran Satyagra that was like the first you know this big break of Mahatma Gandhi in India he had come from South Africa and all uh, you know after doing that Satyagra for the black people and all those things and this was the like the first major thing that he did in India that popularized him in 1917 and uh, yeah this uh, Satyagra has been uh, compared to this Moti Gahari Satyagra now what this Satyagra was all about is that the farmers were being forced that they uh, you know grow indigo rather than you know their crops so that you know uh, these Britishers could sell them and get money and all those kind of things now uh, these uh, people when they told uh, talk to Gandhiji about that he uh, said that you do nothing and you just you know have this you know fasting thing and uh, do the satyagra and then they were also sent to jail and all those things happened and then these uh, uh, the Britishers they you know uh, paid heed to their uh, paid heed to their you know requests and, and it was uh, said that you know uh, there was this negotiation between them so it was kind of the first success of Gandhi in India and that is what it popularized him the kind of result that the silent protest uh, gave was very new to Indians and the effect of it was so brilliant and it has been mentioned in this book is that students left their classes in the city colleges to flock to Gandhi Gangaji's side because Gangaji is mentioned here Gandhiji is not because it could have been controversial so it's like students left their classes in the city colleges to flock to Gangaji's side small town lawyers abandoned the security of their regular fees at the assizes to volunteer for the cause journalists left the empty debating halls of the nominated council chambers to discover the real heart of the new politics the nation was rising with a small balding semi clad saint at its head okay so these are the kind of things that make this book really amazing and this is such an amazing uh, book and i hope the fir part first and second of this uh, book are clear to all of you and I will very soon upload the part third and part four of this uh, book as well. So that was it for today. I hope you all enjoyed it and I hope you all understood the part one and part two of this video. I've tried to use very simple language and I've tried to use as much as uh, creativity and as much as you know um, explanation I could do for this uh, complicated book. So let me know if you found this useful and let me know if I could do anything else to make this video even more, even more easy for you so let me know that in the comment section and uh, i hope i'll meet you in the next video and don't forget to subscribe my channel and like this video bye bye